The Man in the Iron Mask. Based on the novel by Alexander Dumas and written for radio by Eric Scott. A George Edwards production. When Fasquita Carlos discovers that there is an amazing resemblance between Edmund Marchiali and King Louis XIV of France, she writes to the king, who is at present in Versailles. Well, Letelier, an interesting piece of literature. And the perfume is most elusive, Your Majesty. <laughs> I wonder, is the woman? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hardly, when she writes in this then. I would be careful, Your Majesty. It may be that it is an attempt on your life. <laughs> my life? Or my love? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I promise you, she writes, even if I were to forfeit my life, that I have something of the most vital importance to reveal. It concerns yourself and another. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> you know, I I don't think the day will ever dawn when I can refrain from becoming to mystery <laughs> when it concerns a woman. Which reminds me, Your Majesty, the dancer from Paris. She's been here twice. Oh, don't let her inside these doors. She threatens suicide now. So long as she doesn't commit suicide near the fire. While I'm here. Thank you, Carlos. Samasi, Samasi, ma. Oh, but of course there couldn't be any danger. I know the family. Why, Senma used to transact business with my Lord Carden. Then perhaps if you were to consult with him. What? Consult my Lord Carden? When he is already annoyed with me because of my philandering for his niece? I wouldn't dare, my dear Latelia. Then what shall I do, Your Majesty? Dispatch a letter to the Samar State Gascoigne by special messenger. Order the San Peter Carlos to come to Versailles. Meanwhile, in the evil-smelling dungeons of the Bastille, the clock had gone its round once again, and the grisly old warder Edward, doing his rounds with great iron plates upon which were piles of black bread, pauses now before the door of the cell which we have grown to know so well, the cell where Edmund's beloved Marguerite is imprisoned. Mademoiselle. Oh, it's you, warder. And how is Mademoiselle this evening? A little tired. It's been a long day. Mademoiselle, every day is a long day in the Bastille. Yourself, for instance. Only a little light in the daytime, no sunshine, and at night... Oh, the lights I like best. One can see the stars. Through that little grill? I'm lucky. I can see the star I want. Here, quickly. Four pieces of bread for you, instead of the usual two. Hold out your plate. Oh, thank you, Edward, but... Edward? Yes, yes? I was brought up on a farm. I'm used to the animals, even to the crawling things. But whenever you bring me food at this time, there's a rat here in my cell. It came last night and the night before. A rat? Oh, but there are many of them in the back field. Oh, yes, but this one, it, it's so much bigger. So much... Oh, Lord. If I could only get out of here. No, no, little <laughs> mademoiselle, don't cry. Just a moment. We'll settle this rat. That is, if it comes tonight. Oh, it'll be here now, waiting. It smells of food, such as it is. Now then, through this crowbar, I'll deal with any rat. There's a great hole in the far corner. You'll be waiting, I know. Oh, a horrible beast. Up with the lantern, and... Oh, dear, there he is. What a monster. Those two great yellow tusks. Any animal but a rat. Oh, I'm not a coward, monsieur. Will you look at him? The confidence. He's advancing already towards the bread. You scavenger. Quickly, Mamdell, hold the lantern. Oh, be careful. These rats are fierce. The day never came when Edward was frightened of a rat. Even was big as a cat. Take that, you monster. Ah, Mr. Oh, look out. He'll attack you. Ah, what a vicious brute. Made a lunge at me, he did. And bared those yellow fangs. Which way did he run? Towards the far corner. Up, up with the lantern. What a monster. 
Yes, there he is. Look at those beady black eyes. Your end is near, you scavenger. Look at him. He knows you're at bay now. Up on his hind legs, pawing the air, and those yellow fangs bared. Be careful, he'll come at you again. Those yellow fangs bared. Ah, <coughs> ah, got you, my beauty. Oh, you'd feel the bread from a pretty young mamzelle in her cell, would you? Well, there'll be no more bread stealing from you for many a long day. Now, now, Mamzo, don't cry. He's dead now. Thank you, Warder. You're right, he's dead. But after him will come another, and yet another. And after the night will come another night, and yet another night. Now he goes on. Perhaps it would have been better if they had taken me when I was known as Marguerite Frederick. Perhaps it would have been better that way after all. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Mm, not at all. I'm glad you came to the library. Close the door. Yes, Monsieur. Definitely. I wanted to talk to you about our pupil. Are you satisfied with his progress? Not very satisfied, Monsieur. He seems to take no interest in his Spanish. Mm. Edmund is a dreamer. Believer in romance. In true hearts and true lovers' nuts. Um... What became of his parents? His parents? Yes, I often wonder. You see, he never speaks of His him. parents are both dead. I am his guardian. What did you come to see me about? Well, monsieur, a, a relation of mine has written from Paris. She has written me on a matter of very great importance. I was wondering if you would give me leave to be absent for a few days. It is a most urgent matter. So Frasquita Carlos set off in a carriage for Paris and Versailles. Versailles at this time was rapidly nearing completion. All the magnificence and all the color that the king could muster within its walls was already evident in the gallery of mirrors and in the anterooms, reception rooms with their great chandeliers, gilt chairs and tables and crimson plush curtains. Frasquita Carlos, used to the more sober palaces and furnishings of Spain, gasped as she was shown through the numbers of anterooms to the audience room of the king himself. For now, here she was inside the Versailles Palace. Her letter had already been taken to the king. And he, with his minister, Letelier, was waiting in some little interest to behold the writer of the mysterious letter. Soon, the great glittering doors at the end of the audience chamber opened, and Frasquito was brought forward. Your Majesty. Oh, come forward, Mantel. Uh, you are the writer of the letter I received some time ago. Yes, Your Majesty. And now you've come to explain its import. In other words, I'm to have something to my advantage. I hope it will be to your advantage, Your Majesty. It is something that will interest you greatly. Of that I am quite sure. Oh, well, continue. All right. <laughs> I would like this to be for your ears alone, Your Majesty. Oh, oh don't worry about it, Tilly. He knows all my secrets, don't you, Rogue? Your Majesty. Well, first, I must tell you of myself, Your Majesty. I am Spanish. Oh, I knew that. I uh, knew that by your accent. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, you know, of course, that the Infanta Maria Teresa will be leaving Spain very shortly to, uh, to come to the court of France. Yes, Your Majesty. It was in Spain that I accidentally saw a life-size portrait of your majesty. A portrait of mine? Yes, I I happened to be visiting the palace and the portrait was displayed. And no doubt it belonged to the Infanta. I tell you this, your majesty, to explain the strange coincidence which has come my way. Hmm, let me hear more. Have you any relations in Gascoigne, your majesty? Relations? Relations? But of course not, mademoiselle. The royal family are housed in Paris and here at Versailles. I, I humbly beg pardon for my ignorance, Your Majesty, but 
As I explained, I am not of France, so I know nothing of its people. However, to continue, at the moment, I am engaged in teaching Spanish to the ward of a Monsieur Georges Saint-Marc. Oh, yes, yes, I, I know the Saint-Marc. And I was struck by his likeness to your Your Majesty. Likeness to me? I'm very presume. There is nobody in France like you. You may be a foreigner, but sometimes ignorance can go a little too far. That was an insolent remark, woman. But once again, I humbly beg pardon. But so great was his likeness that I felt I must inform the king of it. The old majesty, here again I know I incur your displeasure, but to speak to you, to look at you, is like speaking with the students of mine. Why, you have the same eyes, the same hair, even the voices are familiar. It is so amazing that I, I feel quite faint. There is an uncanny feeling about it all. Almost as though you were here and there. Oh, sure. <laughs> the woman impresses me, Letelia. Yes, the idea teach me. Letelia, can't you see the possibilities that I see? I cannot, Your Majesty. There is no one on earth like the king. Oh, no, no, perhaps not. But if there is somebody so much like me that... This woman is astounded. Perhaps that someone might be able to relieve me of many difficult duties. Why, Your Majesty, you mean... Uh, yes, this uh, dancer, for instance, who, who persists in wanting to commit suicide. Now, if there were two kings here in Versailles, one who faces the difficulties and the other to enjoy the pleasure, uh, it would be a most convenient arrangement for me. Your Majesty. <laughs> a woman, I think the King of France will go to Gascoigne. Thank you.